working green wood into the boards I'm using for some joinery projects. I do a lot of riving with a fro and hewing with this hatchet or axe. And I'm gonna show you uh, one method I use for sharpening this hatchet to get it really tuned up to make that work go more easily. There's lots of ways to do this work. I've tried many of them and uh, the simplest one would be to take a stone of whatever kind and hold the hatchet and the stone like that and do it all freehand. Uh, I probably did that for a number of years. I've sometimes held the handle in a shaving horse and work the bevel that way. These days I do it at my bench and I don't have a dedicated sharpening space in my shop. Places too small to uh, tie up some room that way so I have a uh, just a scrap piece of thin plywood here because this makes a god-awful mess and um, and I use it for all my sharpening in fact. Uh, what I'm going to do is put the, the hatchet on top of this little piece of scrap wood here and then use a hold fast and grab the handle of the uh, hatchet with that hold fast like that. So the hatchet is going to stay put now. And I'll show you how I work the stones on it. Uh, it, it any time you're sharpening a, a big edge like this, uh, I, you can't stress enough that you need to pay attention and be careful. I'm going to be sliding that stone uh, along this edge, but I will have a hand out here. So you always want to be aware of uh, where you're moving, where the edge is. Because although uh, this hatchet isn't sharp enough right now, it's still sharp enough to cut. It's just not sharp enough to cut well. The stone I'm going to start with is a um, is a double-sided. Um, I think it's DMT was the manufacturer. A friend of mine gave this to me. He didn't like it. Said it didn't stay flat enough. I can't really tell the difference. And I'm going to treat this in such a way that a, a softer stone, it would uh, ruin its flatness anyway. Uh, so it, it'll work out uh, fine for this. And this I'll just wet uh, a chunk of the stone. This is a, the coarser of the two sides, but they're both pretty coarse. So what I'm going to do is set that stone on that bevel and run this way along the bevel. So you can see my caution about your hand in that uh, position right there. So here you might have a little better view and I'm right up above the action. And trying to dress that whole bevel. So you want to keep track of a few things at once, which is no easy task. Trying to make sure you're staying flat on that bevel and, um, and also uh, following the curve of the, the hatchet's edge. And at this point, I can keep track of that by just checking with the straight edge, making sure I'm not rounding that over. And if it starts to feel a little bit uh, dry, add a little more water again.
and so uh, by the scratches that are now on this devil I can see I've worked that whole surface pretty well I'm trying to feel underneath to feel if it's folded over a little bit if there's a little burr on there it seems like there is so at that point I can switch to the other side of the stone a little bit finer. You can hear the difference. is looking pretty good. I've got another one of these that's finer still. Um, this is also DMT. <laughs> it says coarse, but it's so worn out that it is no longer coarse. Let's see. You got to be very careful doing this step as well. If you're running along there, if you apply too much pressure, you can slice right through that uh, paper towel or rag or what have you. So always be just hyper aware of where you are when you're doing this. And I'll get one more stone to stone that bevel some more. So now I'll switch to uh, water stone. Um, couple different uh, grits of it and something to keep in mind you probably already know this but just for those who are new to it uh, this work will dish this stone badly and um, you'll need to flatten it to then do a plain blade or a chisel blade or something after it but that's easily done with another stone like the uh, previous ones so this has a uh, I don't know what these are. I've worn the numbers away. Uh, but two different grits. So I'll start on this one. Um, and just be polishing that bevel some more. Doing the same action as before. And I'm trying to move uh, on this stone a little bit so I don't concentrate all the wear in one place. So now I'm not keeping my fingers down there but up on top uh, because I'm near the end of the stone. And then I'll just dip it in water and flip to the finishing side which says 10,000 on it which means something to some of you. It, all it means to me is that's the finest one I have. And that should be enough. You can run your 
rag or cloth off the blade that way, and that's very safe. It'll mop up all that uh, water and then whatever residue is on there from the stone. So now I need to flip the hatchet over to the other side. And uh, this side I haven't touched at all yet. So there's a very fine burr. This is a really hard hatchet, a really hard piece of steel. So the burr is very fine. And um, I'm just going to work on that finest side of this finishing stone. Like that. And I'm just concentrating on that outer half inch or so. Um, contrary to some thought, the back of this is not flat. It's crowned a bit. So it's shaped like that. These corners are lower or higher than this middle, depending on what your orientation is, and uh, so I can do some more. There's still some fine scratches there. Could go back one, do it on the other grit. And flip it over. There's a little nick in it right there, and I'm not gonna try to remove that. My um, my thought on that sort of thing is that over repeated sharpenings, I'll get to that, but it might take ten sharpenings to remove that. Um, but that's that's fine with me. Uh, I don't use this as a finishing tool. So I just want it sharp to make that initial work that I do with it uh, easier. The less you have to swing it, the better off you are. So it's pretty sharp down there. It doesn't feel quite so sharp up top. Didn't quite catch right up there. So I'll just do a little more back and forth uh, on that top edge there.
here I'm just holding the handle down and, but still propping it up on that on that uh, propping the blade up on that scrap wood to get the stone up in the air there One other step you can do uh, is to strop the blade and I keep this little paddle right above my bench and it's not this one's not a piece of leather or anything it's just a chunk of wood it's um, a medium uh, hardwood softwood it's tulip poplar and just some polishing compound uh, rubbed on it And then just this has to go away from you because if I draw back that way I'll just shred the paddle people might think it's overkill to do that to an axe but I figure it uh, only helps <laughs> I pulled back and shaved some just like I said Alright, so I'll test out the hatchet and show you how it's working now that it's freshly honed. I have some twist in this piece, so I'm just going to be taking a swath down there to make that agree with what's up top here. So those are the scoring cuts that I always make, well, almost always make and then I start to slice into that. And here's where a freshly sharpened hatch really makes a difference. Because now I'm just taking a light slice and cut through there and leaving that uh, surface ready for planing. And here I'm now going to blend what I've hewn there and what's above it. So without the scoring cuts, just really taking a slice sort of at a, an angle to the length of the board and just trying to then fare those into one surface. And a really sharp hatchet is essential for that kind of hewing. Like that. Good enough.